Ghana has the bravest cops on the planet. They're not scared to talk to you before pulling their weapon. Mommy! Mommy! Dream day got me on. Fuzzy. I'm Sam. I'm Yabba. And we're Ghana Bound. So today we wanted to say first of all sorry for the video we did um, which had terrible sound. So we really wanted to do it again because it's such a strong topic at the moment and it's one that was also part of the influence of us moving over and that was the involvement of the police and the black community. So yeah, I wanted to, I guess in a way, chat interview i don't know sam about his own experiences about your experiences as a black male growing up in the uk yeah i think it's really apt um the thumbnail was we got stopped 12 times in one night and we're still alive and not only are we still alive at no point did we feel threatened at no point was i you know having to change my demeanor in any way this is really apt again with the um, the George Floyd verdict and literally as soon as that verdict's in there's more and more and more people getting shot just by the police and of course we know the dance they'll start vilifying the person whether they was a, a, a nun or a villain but you know the police's job is to protect us and make us feel safe or protect the common good they are supposed to be judge and jury that's why we have judges and jury you're not supposed to have a death sentence for jaywalking that's not your job so actually the conversation is going to change a bit let's just chat you know the conversation is going to change a bit from what the initial video was being here i don't know if you've noticed well for me i've been a bit oblivious I've just no noticed that. I've been a bit oblivious to what else is going on. George Floyd is massive. But I've actively had to go onto social media to see these things. If I hadn't, I wouldn't actually be aware. I wouldn't be aware of all these other cases in Africa. Here. From here. From here. From my location here. I wouldn't be unless I went onto the Instas and unless I went onto... Uh, uh, well, I'm not even on Facebook that much, but actively going out there and seeing what's going on, the suggestions that come up on Facebook, um, YouTube. And maybe that's the thing that the continent isn't more in uproar about these things because it feels a bit isolated or insulated from those things over here. But what do you, when you say insulated, do you mean like, like it's safe and secure cocoon or you feel like there should be some kind of help being reached out because you see, when we was back in the UK, I felt um, closer to it. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. It felt more, it was more big. The issue was real big. Yeah, so, yeah. But here, you, it feels like there's, this is only me I'm talking about, I'm yeah. not talking about anyone else. It feels like there's like a detachment away from it, or there's a... Is that because it's not in the mainstream yeah. media? It's not in the mainstream media. Is that because, media. People, because obviously everyone like here has social media, everyone's got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube in Ghana, so people go on social media, Yeah. but just because it's a trending topic in, in our community that we've just left, yeah. as in the English, American, yeah, it will come the up. type of people we follow, we, it comes up all the time on our feed, but maybe it doesn't come up. Well, I'd say it comes up more. But um, I don't know, it just seems that there's something there that's niggling away in my brain, as in, why is this not so prominent yeah. in yeah. my day-to-day -day going on? Yeah. Because I'm here, I could literally get away with being in a bubble of, here's the new, I know this is a new phase of our life, and you could shut off anything, we've got thing, issues here that are more prominent. Yeah. Let me ask you this then, if it was prominent here, what do you think... Ghanaian community could do or should do to support the West 
I mean, I think what I'm saying is if I'm feeling a little detached, what would it be like for our government, who are our representatives, who are dealing with stuff day to day? I don't, I don't know. I'm not articulating myself. No, but what you're making sense. What I'm trying to say is I feel like the whole of the continent should be screaming and saying we're not having this for our people in America, our brothers in America, in, in England, we matter. Not the be a Black Lives Matter slogan, but these, we had, we've had loads of conversations and I've said to you, to a degree, it's less important of me being, being Ghanaian and more important me being an African because when a Nigerian wins, I win. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. When a South African win, I win. Yeah. When we're standing anywhere in the diaspora, we're not seen as Ghanaians, we're seen mm. as Africans or that yeah. black man. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that li that bit of the, the, the divide, which again was put on us as a divide, not that we decided any of these borders, okay, is less irrelevant than being there for our fellow Africans. Yeah. And I feel, I'm not sure, I can be corrected, I don't know everything, but I feel that we are, we, our leadership... It's too quiet. Yeah. And I don't know what has been done. So if you can hit me in the comments and say, hey, Sammy, wrong, you know, our leadership is crying out, or what can they do? United together, we can do a lot. But right now, there's a, there's a, there's it a separation. Feels, it feels like there's a separation. Um, and if they are saying stuff, and there, if there is political will, and there is political moves, it's not very public at all. I don't know why that wouldn't be. But this keeps on happening, man. Is that because... Over here, it is very separated. You know, there's not that initial that, that well, for me anyway. There's not that feeling of Africa all together. You know, we're Ghanaian. They're Nigerian over there. They're from Togo over there. So even more so, the black community in England, who who are a whole mixture, and the the, the black community in the US, who are a whole mixture, being murdered by the police. Is there maybe a disconnect? You know, we want the, the continent to cry out and and say this is wrong, stop doing this. I mean, our police are not perfect here in Ghana. They're far from perfect, but no human being is perfect. But the relationship with police here, this is what we were touching on, the relationship with police here is very, very different. I said, we had there, on our trip up to Elamina, Elmina, we got stopped 12 times. There were police barriers there. There were armed police stopping and checking for various different things. At not one point did I fear for my family. But every single interaction was calm, at some points jovial, and very courteous, both ways, relaxed. These are armed police we're talking about. It's a completely different relationship. I'm not going to go into the faults and the issues that we all have, but I'm telling you, you meet a policeman here, you do not fear for your life. It's not in the equation, no. all right? Do the right thing. Even for the most part, and again, that I can be corrected, but my experience, doing the right thing stops a lot. And that's, there's a lot to that statement, I know. We're just here so you're, and there's stories. So what you're stories, saying but about doing the right thing, are you talking about when you get stopped by the police, just do the right thing, like when you got stopped you're the other time? Um, I had my paperwork. Went to Amina. Sam got all his paperwork out. Gave him the paperwork. It was paperwork. all legit. Um, he opened the boot when he got told to open the boot. Then he barely spoke. And, you know, is that what yeah, you mean by doing the right just, thing? I, su I suppose. But then there's going to be people that says, ah, these police, they chop, they do this, they do that. We're not perfect. That's but what I'm saying is, it's the nature of the stop. There was no dynamics. We had our kids in the car. And when the policeman asked him to step out of the car to show him his paperwork and the boot, I didn't start freaking because because it, it was dark as well. I did, I had zero fear about what are they going to do to him. Oh my God, how are they going to be? What are they going to do? I've got my son in the back, my kids. That was just a feeling of oh inconvenient. Let's just get on with this. There Here's was no the other fear. thing. Here's the other thing because I keep hearing this stuff. Police officers can tell me. All right, how come the Ghanaian police are not fearing for their life? Because I keep hearing on, and in these things that were these interactions on the on on these things, okay, 
it's for my safety, I've drawn my weapon, and you see time and time again, the young black man, white man, whatever it in is, America, in America, America has not drawn, has no weapons, has not drawn, you hear enough times of unarmed people running away from the cops, but these cops keep saying our job is dangerous and we're fearing for our own safety. Well, how come none of these Afghanian police who had weapons ever felt uneasy about me, meeting me? They didn't draw their weapons. They didn't feel the need to, to take grab the control of the situation and escalate, escalate, escalate. They treated me like a man, like a normal person, like a normal human being. What is it that these other cops are so scared of? And they've even got more technology, more, they, they, you know, if that car moves, they can track that car. UK, there's two, there's two, what, what do you call it? Two cameras to everyone in the population, apparently. Okay? We've got number recognition, number um, cameras, all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Why are they so scared? Why are the American cops so scared to the point where they have to pull weapons before even talking? Before even doing the thing that they're going to end up doing at the end of it? I don't get it. Furthermore, the, the disconnect between us, the, the narrative that keeps dividing us, oh man, I'm having enough of it. This whole nonsense that they, Africa has nothing, that I remember growing up and feeling that, you know, that it wasn't even cool to be African as a kid for me. I remember the police harassing me for nothing. Just because, sus laws, just in case. It's victimization, it's discrimination, it's clearly, clearly. Am I happy to be home? Yes. I'm happy, I think, I'm going to put this one. Ghana has the bravest cops on the planet. They're not scared to talk to you before pulling their weapon. To talk to you before pulling their weapon. How about that one? How about that for a thumbnail? Ghana has the bravest cops in the world. They will talk to you before they shoot and kill you. They won't even have to. They won't even pick that thing up. If you're a bad guy, you're going to get it. Oh, yeah. But if you're a normal citizen, law-abiding, the last thing you're doing is fearing for your life. Hmm. I would be so afraid if I went to America right now because it doesn't matter that these things are being filmed. It doesn't matter that there's hey, clear a, evidence. A soldier had the it foresight. It doesn't matter that it that it's clear and that we can see what's what they're doing wrong. They are still doing it. So how are we safe? Even soldier had the foresight to go to a lit area in the when, states. When he, when he came out, when he got pulled over, he had a bit foresight. Put his hands on, went to a lit area, and got treated like a piece of gum on the floor. A serving soldier and then we look at the media some of the foxy type of media started to try and paint him as all kinds of stubborn all kinds of belligerent all kinds of what and when you use your own two eyes you can see the whole situation it's disgusting people Africa is not Eden all right it's not problemless but you won't have to fear for your life here you won't have to fear for your life here. You'll be treated as a human being here, in this, on this continent. We are not struggling. We have problems like any other continent, but we have a lot of good things here that you can take and grow and be appreciated for. Come home. Be safe. Peace.